Hi, I'm David with Media Unlocked, and today I'm going to show you how to import your files um, from the Canon T2i, T3i, 5D Mark II, 7D, um, pretty much anything that has that weird H.264 um, compression on it, and how you're going to be able to convert it, then send it into Final Cut Pro, edit it, and then send it to, to compressor, and um, and then export it and have good quality video. Um, I know the last month I've had a couple bad videos. Uh, the quality hasn't been that great, and it's taken me some time to figure out how to do this. And I think I finally got it down perfect. So now what I'm going to do is show you guys how to do this process. So the first thing you're going to need is, is a program called MPEG Stream Clip. Now what it does is, is it goes in and reconverts your files into an Apple Pro as 442. Or if you have another um, another program like Sony Vegas, I don't know what their native uh, file compression is, but you can probably you can compress it in uh, MPEG Stream Clip to their native um, file compression. Therefore, you'll be able to edit without rendering every five seconds. So, um, so what you're going to do is you're going to type in MPEG Stream Clip up here in Google. It's going to be the first one. You're going to go on and click that. You're going to click Download Mac Version or Download Windows Version. Um, of course, I've already got it downloaded, so I'm not going to download it. Um, so then I'm going to downsize this. I'm going to go on and open up in Picture and Clip. Now here's what it looks like. So the first step you're going to do is you're going to go up to List and you're going to click on Batch. Now once you've done that, you're going to click on Add Files. And the file I want is just sitting on my desktop. Here it is. So I'm just going to, to Batch. Um, it's going to ask me, please choose a track. Pick um, Export to QuickTime. Now it's going to and then it's going to ask you where do you want to put it. I'm just going to send it back to the actually I'm not going to send it back to the desktop. Um, actually I'm going to send it to the desktop. So I'm going to send it to the desktop. Select. Now here is where up here is where you can change what you want it to convert the file into. Now it's already at H.264. So I want to convert it to an Apple ProRes because that's what's going to make it work for Final Cut Pro. Now, if you have different editing softwares, you may need to convert it into a different um, format here. So, but I'm going to go with Apple ProRes 422. Now, I'm going to put the quality at 100%. Now, this is going to make your file quite large. It's going to take like, say it was a gig, it will take it and turn it into like three or four gig file. So, it does do that to you. So, you're going to do Apple ProRes 422, quality at 100%. You're going to go to audio. You're going to click on 48 kilohertz. Now here's where it gets a little tricky on picking which one of these you want to pick. So this is the way um, the way I look at it. If you shot in 24 or 30 frames per second, depending if you're NTS or P PAL, um, and that's all you shot, you didn't shoot any 60 frames per second footage. Click on 19. Um, you can leave it at 1920 by 1080 unscaled. Now if you shot in, let's say uh, and those are really what you want to do is just port, import the 24 or 30 frame per second footage. Now let's say that you shot some of your footage in 50 frames per second or 60 frames per second, depending if you're NTS or PAL. Um, then the best you want to do is you probably want to do this this uh, 10 10 1280 by 720 um, conversion right here. Now the difference is is that if you brought if you batch in a whole batch of files and there's a few 60 frames or 50 frames per second um, files in there, it's going to end up making them when you do this unscaled 1920 by 1080, it's actually going to uh, distort your 720 by by 1280 footage that was shot in 50 or 60 frames per second. So um, so what I do is I'll if I if I have a lot and I don't want to like go through and find my 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 720 frames or my 60 frames and my 24 frames per second. Um, I'll just batch them all at at uh, 1280 by 720 HD TV 720p. So, but most of my footage is shot all at 24, so I'm just going to leave it at 1920 by 1080 unscaled. All right. So after you've done that, you're going to go and you're going to de-click the interlace scaling and go on and click the interlace video. Now, once you've done that, you are set up and ready to go. So I'm going to click to batch, and then I'm going to click go. All right, so now what it's going to do is it's going to batch the file. It's a small file, so it's only going to take a couple seconds to go through and turn it into Apple ProRes 422. So we'll wait on that for a second. All right, it is at 50%, so it's almost done.
All right. Alright, so now it's done. I'm going to go on and exit out in Pixstream Clip. I no longer need it. And now I'm going to open up Final Cut Pro. And let me bring my Final Cut Pro over here. Actually, I need to go. If you And if you were using Final Cut Pro, you can actually set up different arrangements for, uh, for your windows. I have mine set up in a weird complexion. So, and you can save it like I, I call mine yes. Um, so... Uh, dual screen editing, dual screen um, standard. So I'm just going to go with the standard setup right there. So if you guys didn't know, I have, if I wanted to change this to go to window, go down to arrange, and then I can click yes. And well, it took it off my other screen and put it on my other screen. Um, but it put it in the, f in the, the way I have, uh, the way I like to edit. So you can save your screen layout, which is really awesome with Final Cut Pro. But that's kind of getting off the subject. So we'll go back to standard here. We'll open it up. Uh, I've got cap locks on. Let's turn that off. Let's do new project. Let's bring in um, the file that I just turned into Apple ProRes 422. All right, here it is. Now, before you do anything, you need to go up to Final Cut Pro, click on audio and video settings, and then this is what I just converted it into. So you want to go in and click on Apple ProRes 422 HQ 440 by 1080. Uh, actually, we can do it by 1080 by 24 frames per second. So um, if you are editing in, well, this would work either way, the 420. But if for some reason, when you drop it into the timeline and it doesn't work, and you have uh, 60 frame, 50 frame per second footage, you can go in and change this to 50i or 60i depending if you need to or not or 60 there's 60 right there so there's a couple of different things you can pick from but I keep mine at the Apple Pro S422 HQ 440 by 1080 24 frames per second so click OK so now what I'm going to do is drag my piece right into the timeline uh, yes and as you notice I don't have to <laughs> Um, all I have to do is just play the footage and I can edit right there. The only thing I'm going to have to render if I add any kind of like special effects or if I add in, let's say, a transition, yeah, I'll have to go on and render that out. So, I don't have to render this. But, now let's say I'm done editing here. So, I'm going to click on my files. I'm going to go to File, Export, and then I'm going to hit Using Compressor. So... Um, and I would set up, and I'm going to show you how to set up a custom compressor setting. Um, so this is my 1080 custom compressor setting, um, already under custom. But, oops, let's hide Final Cut here. And let's go to compressor only. So there's my file. It's sitting right here. All right, so um, once you've figured out, once you've got it. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a custom setting. As you see, I've got my YouTube 1080. So now I'm going to make a 720p one for if I have 60 frames per second. So I'm going to go in, and it doesn't matter which one you pick, um, but I, I just I always just go with QuickTime Movie. So and then you're going to go up and you're going to hit uh, Window Inspector. If that's not already up, we're going to rename this right here to YouTube. underscore and I'm gonna put 720 so this is where I'm gonna put my 720 feed uh, footage now you can leave it at QuickTime um, video and go in let's make it the best quality so let me just double so you're gonna click on video settings we're gonna go to best um, frame rate I don't know why it's at 15 let's change it to 24 or if it's 60 frames per second, well, that's if it's all 60 frames per second, click it to 60. If it's just 60 and 24, just leave it at 24 frames per second. Put that in H.264. It's taken me quite a while to figure all this all this stuff out over the last couple of weeks. That's what I've been working on. So um, click OK. So now you got your audio. We're gonna It's at 48 kilohertz, so we can just leave it there. Um, then let's go on down the line. Don't need to worry about that. Don't need to worry about that. And then frame size um <clears throat> so this is going to be my 1280 by 720 so that's going to be change that then you're going to put save all right so now i have both my youtube settings set up um as you can see my uh, my 1080 um 
and I've got it set up to 1220 by 1080 or uh, and my video settings are up here at H.264 at best quality so you're gonna get the best quality out of, out of these going through these steps and using um, setting up your custom settings so this is a 1080 uh, file by 1920 so there it is now I'm gonna right click on source and then I can send a destination I'm gonna send it to the desktop and then I'm gonna click submit uh, yes okay would you like to save changes okay and then if you want to put a title to it I'm not going to submit and then it's going to go up under history and it's going to show you how long it's going to take to outsource it alright so it has finished so this is what the footage I just edited is okay just talk tester one two three okay just talk Tester one two three. We're testing the mic, and we're doing mixers today. This is what it looks like before it got edited. Okay, just talk. Tester one two three. We're testing the mic, and we're doing mixers today. So that is how you do a, I guess, a Final Cut Pro from from your DSLR camera to the editor to the exporter. And then on up to YouTube. Um, now, if you have long files and long, like you, you're uploading a video to YouTube and say it is, um, you use these settings and it comes out with too many, with, you know, you only got like a two two gig upload limit, and it comes out with two, you know, it comes out at 2.5 gigs. So you can go into your settings here, go into Inspector, and then. Um, Go back to this and you can go to video settings. You can bring it down to high or medium so that the quality won't be as good, but the file size will be much smaller. So I hope this helps. If there's anything else that you guys would like me to make, uh, it was actually a subscriber that asked me to make this video. He wanted to know how to do this. So I took time on my day and I was more than happy to help out. So if there's anything else anyone else would like me to do, send me a message is really the best way to go about it. Um, you can leave a comment, but sometimes I miss your comments, and I apologize for that. I have quite a few of those rolling in a day, and I try to keep up with every single one of them. And again, check us out at Twitter, at David D. Images, if you really want to keep um, keep ahead of the curve, because that's where I let you guys know when I put up new videos, or uh, hopefully, here in the next couple months, I'd like to do a contest and give something away. It'd be fun. So if that goes well, you know, I'm going to do something like that this summer. So you'll know about it on Twitter before you'll know about it on YouTube. Anyway. <laughs>